Dear students, now we shall see the unit 3 of security analysis and portfolio management. In that, in that we shall see about fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis is a logical and systematic approach to estimate the future dividends and share price. It is based on the basic premise that share price is determined by a number of fundamental factors relating to the economy, industry and company. It is a detailed analysis of the fundamental factors affecting the performance of companies. Each share is assumed to have an economic worth based on its present and future earning capacity. This is called its intrinsic value or fundamental value. The purpose of fundamental analysis is to evaluate the present and future earning capacity of a share based on the economy, industry and company fundamentals. The investor can compare the intrinsic value of the share with the prevailing market price to arrive at an investment decision. If the market price of the share is lower than its intrinsic value, the investor would decide to buy the share as it is underpriced. The price of such a share is expected to move up in future to match with its intrinsic value. When the market price of a share is higher than its intrinsic value, it is pursued to be overpriced. The market price of such share is expected to come down in future. The investor would decide to sell such a share. Economy, Industry, Company Analysis Framework The analysis of the economy, industry and company fundamentals constitutes the main activity in the fundamental approach to security analysis. The logic of this three-tier analysis is that the company performance depends not only on its own efforts but also on the general industry and economy factors. The multitude of factors affecting the performance of a company can be classified as economy factors such as growth rate of the economy, inflation rate, foreign exchange rates, etc which affect all companies. Industry factors such as demand supply gap in the industry, the emergence of substitute products, changes in government policy relating to the industry. Company specific factors include elements such as the age of its plant, the quality of management, brand, ima brand image of its products, its labor management relations, etc. Steps in fundamental analysis. Number one, economic analysis. Next, industrial analysis. And third, company analysis. Now, we shall see about economic analysis. The performance of a company depends on the performance of the economy. If the economy grows rapidly, the industry can also be expected to slow, show rapid growth and vice versa. When the level of economic activity is low, stock prices are low and when the level of economic activity is high, stock prices are high reflecting the prosperous outlook for sales and profit of the firms. A study of these economic variables would give an idea about future corporate earnings and the payment of dividends and interest to investors. The following are some of the key economic variables that an investor must monitor as part of this fundamental analysis. Growth rate of national income, inflation, interest rates, budget, the balance of payments, infrastructure, climatic factors like monsoon etc, economic and political stability. First we shall say about growth rate of national income. GNP, Gross National Product, NNP, Net National Product and GDP, Gross Domestic Product or the different measures of the total income or total economic output of the country as a whole. The growth rates of these measures indicate the growth rate of the economy. The estimate of GNP, NNP and GDP and their growth rates are made available by the government from time to time. An economy typically passes through different phases of prosperity 
known as the different stages of the economic or business cycle. The stage of the economic cycle through which a country passes has a direct impact on the performance of industries and companies. While analyzing the growth rate of the economy, then an investor would do well to determine the stage of the economic cycle through which the economy is passing and evaluate its impact. Next, inflation. Inflation has considerable impact on the performance of companies. High rates of inflation are likely to affect the performance of companies adversely. Industries and companies prosper during times of low inflation. Inflation is measured both in terms of whole prices, wholesale prices through the wholesale price index and, ta and ta in terms of uh, retail prices through the consumer price index. Interest rates determine the cost and availability of credit for companies operating in an economy. A low interest rate stimulates investment by making credit available easily and cheaply. It implies lower cost of finance for companies and thereby assures higher profitability. Higher interest rates result in higher cost of production which may lead to lower profitability and lower demand. The interest rates in the organized sector of the economy are determined by the monetary policy of the government and the trends in the money supply. An investor has to consider the interest rates prevailing in the different segments of the economy and evaluate their impact on the profitability of companies. Next, budget. The budget draft provides an elaborate account of the government revenue from and expenditure on various factors or various sectors. A deficit budget may lead to high rates of inflation and adversely affect the cost of production. A surplus budget may result in deflation. Hence, balanced budget is highly favorable to the stock market. The balance of payments. The balance of payments is the record of a country's receipts from and payments to be made abroad. The difference between receipts and payments may be surplus or deficit. Balance of payments impacts the strength of the country's currency. If the deficit increases, the currency may depreciate against other currencies, thereby affecting the cost of imports. Forex rate Industries involved in exports and imports are considerably affected by the changes in foreign exchange rate. The volatility of the foreign exchange rate affects the quantum of investment by foreign institutional investors in a country's stock market. Next, infrastructure. The development of an economy depends very much on the infrastructure available. The availability of infrastructural facilities such as power, transportation and communication systems affects the performance of companies. An investor should assess the status of the infrastructural facilities available in the economy before finalizing his investment plans. Climatic factors. The performance of agriculture to a very great extent depends on factors like the monsoon. The adequacy of the monsoon determines the success or failure of the agricultural activities in many countries. The progress and adequacy of the monsoon becomes a matter of a great concern for an investor in the Indian context. Economic and political stability the stable political environment is necessary for steady and balanced growth. Stable long-term economic policies are needed for industrial growth. A stable government with clear-cut long-term economic policies will be conducive to the good performance of the economy. Economic forecasting. Economic analysis is the first stage of fundamental analysis and starts with the historical analysis of the performance of the economy. Investment is a future-oriented activity. The investor is more interested in the expected future performance of the overall economy and its various segments. For this, forecasting the future direction of the economy becomes necessary. Economic forecasting becomes a key activity in economic analysis. The central theme in economic forecasting is to forecast the national income with its various components. GNP is a measure of the national income. 
it is the total value of the final output of goods and services produced in the economy. It is the measure of the total economic activities over a specified period of time and an indicator of the level and rate of growth of economic activities. Economic indicators. The economic indicators or factors that indicate the present status and possible progress or slowdown of the economy. They are capital investment, business profits, money supply, GNP, interest rates, employment levels, etc. The economic indicators are grouped into leading, coincidental and lagging indicators. Leading indicators indicate what is going to happen in the economy and analysis of them helps the investor to predict the path of the economy. The major leading indicators are the fiscal policy, monetary policy, productivity, rainfall, capital investment and the stock indices. Coincidental, in, coincidental indicators. Coincidental indicators indicate what the economy is. The coincidental indicators are gross national product, industrial production, interest rates and reserve funds. GDP is the aggregate amount of goods and services produced in the national economy. The gap between budgeted GDP and the actual GDP attained indicates the present situation. Lagging indicators are the changes that are occurring in the leading and coincidental indicators and reflecting in the lagging indicators. Lagging indicators are identified as unemployment rate, consumer price index and flow of foreign funds. Forecasting techniques. Economic forecasting may be carried out for short term up to 3 months, intermediate periods 3 to 5 years and long term more than 5 years. An investor is more concerned about short term economic forecasts. Some of the techniques of short term economic forecasting are anticipatory surveys, barometric or economic indicator approach, econometric model building and opportunities, opportunistic model building. First we shall see about anticipatory surveys. Anticipatory surveys or the surveys of intentions of people in government, business, trade and industry regarding their construction activities planned and missionary expenditures, level of inventory, etc. Such surveys may also include the future plans of consumers with regard to their spending on durables and non-durables. Based on the results of these surveys, the analyst can form his own forecast of the future state of the economy. Next one, econometric model building. This is the most precise and scientific of the different forecasting techniques. It makes use of econometric tools. Econometrics is a discipline that applies mathematical and statistical techniques to economic theory and analysis. In the economic field, we find complex interrelationships between different economic variables. The precise relationship between the dependent and independent variables are specified in a formal mathematical manner in the form of equations and statistical analysis. Econometric model building. In applying this technique, the analyst has to define clearly and precisely the interrelationship between the economic variables. Econometric models used for economic forecasting are generally complex. Vast amounts of data are required to be collected and processed for the design of the model and its application to empirical situations. This may cause delay in making the results available and involve time and cost. Opportunistic model building. This is one of the most widely used forecasting techniques. It is also known as DNP model building or sectoral analysis. Initially, an analyst estimates the total demand in the economy, present and future and based on this, he estimates the total income or GNP for the forecast period. The initial estimate takes into consideration the prevailing economic environment such as the existing tax rates, interest rates, rates of inflation, fiscal policies, etc. 
After initial forecast is arrived at, the analyst now begins building up a forecast of the GNP figure by estimating the levels of various components of GNP such as consumption expenditure, gross private domestic investment, government purchase of goods and services and net exports. The two GNP forecasts arrived at by two different methods will be compared and necessary adjustments will be made. This model building approach makes use of other forecasting techniques to build up the various components. Thank you. Now we have seen economic analysis. In the next presentation, we shall see about industry analysis and company analysis.